In January, the district judge overseeing the U.S.'s extradition appeal, Vanessa Barritzer, said Mr. Assange's publication of classified military and government documents arguably amounted to a crime. But he could not be transferred to the U.S. because he was unwell and could take his own life. On Wednesday, James Lewis QC, representing the U.S., told the Lord Chief Justice and Lord Justice Holroyd that conclusion was wrong. He said Mr. Assange's psychiatrist had misled the earlier judge and the U.S. had not been given an opportunity to answer her concerns. Mr. Assange, 50, is wanted in the U.S. on allegations of a conspiracy to obtain and disclose national defense information following Wikiliak's publication of hundreds of thousands of leaked documents relating to the Afghanistan and Iraq wars. The publications include the release in April 2010 of footage showing U.S. soldiers shooting and killing civilians from a helicopter in Iraq. Mr. Assange has been in Belmarsh Prison since 2019, when he was carried out of the Ecuadorian embassy in London by police and arrested for breaching his bail conditions. He had been in the embassy since 2012, avoiding extradition to Sweden, where he faced sex offense allegations. He has always denied those, and they were eventually dropped. On Wednesday morning, Mr. Assange's legal team initially told judges he would not attend because he was not well. He later attended via a video link from prison. Mr. Lewis said the assurances were binding on the United States. He said the previous judge's approach carries with it the risk of rewarding fugitives for their flight and of creating an anomaly between the approach of the courts in domestic criminal proceedings and an extradition. Mr. Lewis said that Mr. Assange's psychiatrist, Prof. Michael Koppelman, had misled the court about Mr. Assange's psychiatric state by concealing his relationship with his partner, Stella Morris, and that they had two children together. The lawyer for the U.S. argued this meant the judge could not consider the true risks of Mr. Assange taking his own life because the need to protect children can be a factor that discourages people from suicide. He also said that during cross-examination, Prof. Koppelman would not accept that Mr. Assange could be safe in the U.S. even if he received a short sentence and reasonable time with other inmates. Mr. Lewis called psychiatrist Prof. Sina Fazel from the University of Oxford, who said he did not share the defense's view that Mr. Assange would certainly take his own life in the U.S. Mr. Assange's lawyer, Edward Fitzgerald QC, said the risk of suicide is not something in the future, it is something imminent the moment that extradition becomes likely. He said Parliament had given district judges the power to protect mentally disordered people from extradition to countries where the UK has no control over their treatment. He said that in January, the judge took the evidence fully into account and relied on the fact Mr. Assange would be isolated and deprived of the protections he had in Belmarsh. The U.S. assurances were caveated, vague or simply ineffective, he said, calling the suggestion that he could be detained in Australia meaningless, as the country has not said it would accept him. Supporters, family members and friends of Mr. Assange outside court expressed their outrage after he did not attend his hearing in person. They said they were concerned he was thin, he was not there to instruct his lawyers or clarify what was going on in court. The high court hearing is expected to end on Thursday with a decision at a later date.